Hello. Hello. Are you there? How's it going, buddy? Yo. What's good, dog? Chilling. Not much. Not much. Getting ready. Yeah. How much LP you want at the moment? I'm at. Let's see. Real fast. I got the game open. Seven ninety six. Seven ninety six. So pretty much eight. Yeah. Pretty much eight hundred. Damn, man. Are you top twenty? I am not. I'm like top forty. That's still uh, pretty I good. I think when I looked, like. 20th had like a thousand LP, so I'm still a couple hundred off. Oh, uh, so top 20 is sitting around a thousand now. Two days yeah, ago, it, I think I saw Navi it was like 17th on 800. Oh, he dropped big. I'm like, I think I'm above him now. Unlucky. Should have yeah. played more Darrowing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do you want to talk about the cards? Have you? So you've already I'm seen them all, right? I've seen them all. I got them open too. You know. So all right. So. You got about anything. Look, look, look. Tell me about Heimerdinger quickly. Tell me about Heimerdinger quickly. I mean, Heimer, it's like a big change with like a lot of different reworks. Like, you know what I mean? And like, mm -hmm. I think there's like almost too much with it to like really predict. I think he's still good. And I, I think there's some things that could be done with him for sure. But like, it's going to just be like a lot of labbing to find the most optimal build for it you know what yeah. i mean yeah i got i got super overwhelmed when i first saw this i was like oh man yeah it's a lot to take in because the first impression is to think that it's obviously a nerf but we don't know yeah. like what might happen in the future if this i was like if this yeah. change actually means like not necessarily a nerf but it's technically a rework right technically yeah it really is a rework for sure like it's anything like yeah yeah go on no, it's like just opening a whole different route of uh, like options, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. Like the only real nerf to Heimbinniger technically is Flash of Brilliance. Yeah, that's, that's the, the technical. Mm -hmm. But um there's a there's a bit of a bit of a rumors going around, a bit of a little bit of a discussion amongst top tier players. Uh, I was that watching possibly the same one. Yeah, uh, I keep forgetting his name. Who's a Heimbinniger player? You know the Alan? Alan's EQ. You were watching his yeah. chat with Swim and stuff? Yeah, he's saying the Stand United. Stand United, yes. Yeah. Stand that United. Seemed, yeah, seemed yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was convinced that, like, he wanted to run that kind of card, but had no reason to. But, like, he was on the sideline that he's like, I want to run this card. Now I have a reason to. Yeah, that's for sure. Interesting. We'll blow games open. Yeah, it's interesting. If and, um. Yeah. And it, like, <laughs> I feel like in general, my bad, bro. It's I feel like good. in general, just a six-one elusive turret. I mean, if you're not playing the right deck, that could blow up in a game on its own. Yeah, uh, Tenkoa. Why does he want to run that card? I think uh, for the super duper trades, like with Vi and stuff. And uh, you can actually cheese your opponent by flipping Vi into a face damage. And now if you're like dropping, like he said that there was no good reason to run it because he thought that this card was garbage. This, cause this used to be the six mana card, the MK4. And now like Stand United is a six mana card promoting six one elusive turns. Potential, that's I guess what his point was. I think the Vi was yeah. a big reason for it though. The Vi for sure. Cause I'm thinking about it like in a way if you're running any other elusives in that deck list, like you have a monk that's pretty much the guaranteed opening for the stand united to work you know what i mean yeah right the monk will be blocked into so you'll just have like a free avenue to just switch into vi and vi's like you know what i mean that's hard to remove with a barrier if you don't have vengeance or the new will you're you're out of luck yeah vi's extremely difficult to deal with mm -hmm. and stand united's burst speed as well which is insane yeah mm -hmm. now i guess because this is gonna be like the hot topic right high midiga so before we talk about some of the other cards, I'm just going to skip down to Shadow Assassin and we'll talk about that quickly. Yeah, for sure. Think this I mean, card's dead? I, I do. Yeah, I do in a lot I'm, of ways. I'm convinced it's dead. Now, if you're watching the same chat as me, then you have probably heard um, Alan ZQ talking about potential replacements in fucking this card. Alan ZQ has a boner for this card. Scales of the Dragon. Oh yeah, I heard I heard him saying that. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. yeah. I think um, uh, that's a little bit of a reach. I can see yeah. the utility in some <laughs> situations, but he's talking about trading into Rider and stuff, and Rider yeah, yeah. is gonna about to be less relevant. That's it a is. less relevant uh, function for sure. When when people see numbers, they don't want to play cards that have less numbers now. I yeah. think this card's pretty cool though. 
but um it's cool is it gonna I be don't think the, it's like, yeah. the optimal mm -hmm. switch <laughs> exactly all right but so, um if there's any utility for shadow assassin it's just like the fact that it has elusive in general like you could always buff it or something you know what i mean along those lines so it could maybe fit into certain decks but overall it's gonna be like pretty dead man yeah. we'll see what happens when the card collection extends further beyond reach but i think oh, for then now really with, nice. with the limited card draw like limited amount of cards when you're trying to build a deck with certain amount of synergy the shadow assassin becomes suddenly very undervalued yeah i don't know i think when like more cards come out and there's more of a reason to run a three mana one two elusive that draws you a card then this card might come back but for now comparing it to the rest of the collection it's pretty hard to justify a three mana one two uh, okay so pretty much uh, in heimerdinger's stance no way can i imagine it being as strong right now but as the future mm -hmm. goes on and like yeah. who knows what happens like what happens if like way like ionia gets access to like what happens if you play like lux heimerdinger with stand united yeah. Yeah. and ranges resolve and stuff holy shit you, man you do a six mana remembrance that's like a final spark in a six one elusive turret yeah dude like that's like, like insane and the body it's like we might think that this is okay it's changing its current matchup spread but it pushes yeah. Heimerdinger in a different direction and if people want that elusive damage it's gonna come later in the game it just means that like aggro elusive decks can punish Heimerdinger now that's what yeah. I feel Mm -hmm. and I think that's what's generally being discussed. So Arcanus, I know you're a big Luxheimer fan, so you know this this could be your time. This could very much be a good time to run a Lux like Heimerdinger, Lux, Stand United, maybe like a Rangers Resolve. Who knows, man? Like all these cards put together is pretty nutty. Yeah. And Rangers Resolve, um, who was it? Who did it keep I think Skarza keeps talking about Rangers Resolve once again has not been his dodge nerfs. He's convinced that card like, is broken. Yeah. I do not agree with that. I don't agree strictly because of the play rate, which I think is the most important thing for Riot's perspective on adjusting cards. Yeah. It has a very well, I just strong think in niche. general. Yeah. yeah. Go on. I'm just like, if you're aware of like the lists that are running it, like you just can't play into it. Just never risk playing into it and you'll no, you like, can't. be okay. You know what I mean? Like, you can't, you can't it, play around when, it. When you do, you're going to feel bad. Yo, you're Davey. Feel bad every time. I came in earlier today, not just to say hi and bye. Well, I appreciate that, man. Remembrance Heimerdinger. Yes. Radi We're talking like Radiant Guardian, all that crazy. Actually, maybe not Radiant Guardian. Maybe maybe in the Heimerdinger list, we can run Scales of the Dragon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not bad. I mean, that's that's going to be in that one list for sure. The Allen list. Well, when we when we consider the three drops, I guess maybe you still run. I don't know. Well, actually, now that we're in Demacia, we have better three drops. So if we're making a Luxheimer list, you can run like Mage Seekers. More of a reason to run Stand United too. Holy shit! Actually, Lux Lux Vimer is gonna be fucking maybe low key crazy, dude. And I it think can, it like, will be. And that I think that deck can pace. It can pace Karma as. Yeah. Because if you're not doing I much agree. in the early game, then you're giving Ezreal no good targets to do anything. And then it, when you have like one explosive turn, it's hard for like Ionia and B, P and Z to clear a full board. Completely agree. Fuck. Uh, they'll be they'll be like relying on Deny, I feel like, in that matchup. Yeah. Maybe Deny is going to start to get you bumped up. You have to bump up. to a three. Yeah. For sure. But I mean, Stand United is still fucking burst speed. Burst speed. Exactly. That one's going to get you done. But the good thing in a sense about that oh you're still gonna get rocked but like they can't play it like in the situation that they're playing it they won't be able to play the turret on the same turn yeah that's so, true but and you can't, rocked and you, you, from you can't, you can't at least like if you're trying to do like some sort of big swing turn with stand united you can't really like because stand united wants to be played during combat mostly yeah so you don't really get that initial six one elusive tyrant which I guess mm -hmm. is kind of okay. Um, which Isaac is like what I was thinking of like spells for six mana that like run at burst that like you get the functionality at the point where it still makes sense to play the six one turret. Like maybe, yes. uh, you know, uh, 
back to back or something. Yeah. Uh, hold up. Isaac CVC, you have the same name as me. Would you like to play my deck? Uh, no, thank you. Not right now. We're just discussing the patch notes with Fane HD. Um, I'm already running Lux Vima with Mage Seekers. Yeah, yeah, well, it's getting a buff next patch. Consider Stand United. Don't speak a Heimerdinger. Tenkor, you're smoking good weed. Do you want to share some? Yeah. All right. So that pretty, I think that sums up Heimerdinger. We'll wait and see exactly what happens though, honestly. like, It's going to be insane. Like we, we talk about all these things happening, but until we get like the uh, the raw numbers, the raw gameplay, it's like really hard to figure it out. Like I might say Lux Vima seems crazy right now. Like Lux, Lux, uh, Lux Heimerdinger. Yeah. But it might, it might be too slow. We'll see. Cause again, that deck would get punished by like elusive aggro. So yeah, certain thing it, it'd have to be built. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we have to see what the meta is looking like. Wait, so now that we, now that things have changed as well. So just one more thing. We have the, the fearsome tyrant on three, which feels kind of the same as elusive in a sense. But not in really. a lot of ways yeah i think it'll still feel really bad like um it, and the overwhelm i think is in the weakest slot now i think yeah, overwhelm sure. generally is just i mean like that deck like you're not playing harmoniger to like set up a big overwhelm turn that usually gets cleared absolutely not yeah Hi, hi. I also I have a lux vi i really hope it gets better it might that's also another option too like lux vi and then you run Stand United as well. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. But that's not reason. exactly changing. No. It's not exactly cheesing the Elusive Tyrants either. Like, it's not as yeah. much of a reason to run Stand United. Um, yeah, so hi, Medina. I just thought of something else interesting, though, too. Talk to me. Is running Lux Heimer and you set up all these turrets, you run some, then something like Ranger's Resolve gets a little crazy it does because you could just survive like wills just straight up you don't even have to twin discipline is there any like niche uh hang on let me check i'm thinking about like the five mana slot for like damasia for a sec oh, i mean there's there's a lot of it there's good cards yeah. in five mana right yeah. i'm talking about spells mm -hmm. oh, okay, strike detain because like if you're running let's say you're on a like a like a, maybe like a i don't know if you go as far as to want to run a triple ranger's resolve yeah. probably not probably not but if you have a good mixture of uh, six mana spells one mana spells and five mana spells it gets pretty consistent at that point and ranger's resolve is pretty it's it's pretty good i don't know i think that's yeah there's a, some things that can be done there are so many things that can be done i, I don't know if there's anything much else to talk about heimdinger i think most people probably oh, want to sure. hear about heimdinger but at this point it's yeah it's pretty up in the air it's gonna be a wait and see. Yeah, like I still find it hard to think about Lux and Heimerdinger being the better Heimerdinger Vi, but yeah, who knows? So um, I I think it will be personally. Hmm. It just in my head it sounds like the Lux, the Demacia Ionia list is uh, Demacia PNZ list sounds better in my head, but we'll see. Yeah. So Braum is now a zero five that summons a three three. Yeah, this I think um, he's taking a little bit of a hit, but I mean he's still good. He can still slot in in most of the decks he's already in. Maybe some will consider switching him for something else. Yeah, I'm just trying, uh, to, think, I'm just trying think... to think of what decks would cut this. Like you know, yeah. there's like the like the kind of more aggressive versions of Braum. There's like the mm -hmm. like they are uh, Noxus Braum kind of stuff. Not the stuff that runs Vlad, but the stuff that's more like just sometimes only running Swing. Braum. Like there's some oh, decks. Only have you seen Braum. that? Have you seen that? There's like I a have Noxus. not actually ran into that. No. Well, I don't think I'll see, we'll be seeing that. It's like a control deck. Yeah. After. Okay. It's interesting. I was trying to think of like Noxus control. Yeah, it's close. It was close. It was pretty much just Braum, like the Crimson Disciple package, etc. And like it closed out the game. I don't know how it closed out the game, but it was it was considered a control deck. I only versed it a few times, but yeah. it, cla it clapped me every time. Okay, that's crazy to hear. Anyway, that's that's like that's one bad example of a deck. I'm just trying to think of like, I think I'm I'm pretty sure people run Braum in a lot of decks because it was just too strong. Yeah, well, I think I agree with that. I think, like, Brahma Nivia is just dying in general. Yeah, so, definitely. Sorry, Tenkor. So, I mean, 
I'm convinced. It's not even that it's it's taking it out. It's just not going to exist. Yeah. So I got clapped a couple times and I've rebuilt a similar deck by a pretty much a Nivea control, but instead of a Nivea, it was Hecarim. Okay. That's I think interesting. A, I think a deck like that might replace that kind of slot. Like I, aggro, yeah. aggro kind of, because some Nivea lists were running pretty aggressive tools already. So why not just instead of running a Nivea, which is better in the late game, just run like Hecarim, which is for that insane. instant payoff. Yeah. yeah I got you. Um, but for now, Braum is. I don't really know. I think Vlad Braum could still be a thing. Like, yeah. I don't know. I think you want to run. You're running Braum now strictly for the utility, not for the aggression. That is, I think, yeah. my take on Braum's overall. Something that was brought to my attention, though, that yeah. is pretty bad for Braum now, though, is that if you take heart or in certain lists like Twin Discipline to get him out of calling strike range, it doesn't work anymore. True. Makes Ash so, Judge already yeah. pretty much really strong. The top. Yeah, absolutely. It already is the top. But, uh, yeah, I think I... I'm imagining that Braum is just not going to be seen as often. I was, I was saying, not at all. I don't think his play or his um utility is really hurt that much from this, but his play rate, I feel like, is going to take the fattest hit to the from this. Mm. Hold up, Tenku has got a hot take. Braum and Nivia can beat mid-range decks. I find it. Oh yeah, no, you're right. I think triple ruination Braum and Nivia lists clap him. But um. Yeah, for sure. Well, any. Shadow Isles deck that runs uh, three of Ruination just kind of messes up like Demacia mid range stuff like that because they don't really have a way to recover from a board wipe. No, it's just kind barely. of game for them. Yeah, maybe so I, was I don't think the that's like, wrong. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that. Oh, you getting clapped by them? I usually do because what happens is it's like if they like deal with my Braum early. I'm yeah. just not really doing much. And if they hit like their Hawks early, it's just, that's too much of a, like a, like generally what happens is if I'm, if I'm not clearing their five fives, if they hit like trappers on curve and like yeah. play, play a couple of five fives and hit one assessor, that to me, I feel like the game is, I'm losing the game. And if I can deal oh, yeah. with my the, Braum the early. The assessor fuels them for sure. That's like the one situation where they're able to like revamp after, like rebuild after a ruination hit. But like mm. generally, Ruination is the if biggest you can, enemy. If you can get range. one clean Ruination off where they can't develop afterwards, you win. But sometimes yeah, there's multiple Ruinations to win. But mm -hmm. I think what makes the matchup extremely harder is if they clear your first Braum. So maybe I'm just playing yeah. the matchup wrong. But um, fuck, man. I, I, I felt like I found myself winning 50% of those games. Yeah. I got you. I understand what you mean. And now Nivea's egg got gets changed as well. I like this change personally. I yeah. think uh Nivea's a little bit more fragile, but um the eggs are a little toxic for me. I'm not a big fan of them. In yeah, general, so I'm I'm good to just see them um, in a state where they're easier to deal with. I like mean, how often is it? How, how 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 yeah. often is it that you actually clear, like, want to clear the egg? And would you consider clearing it now because you can clear it easier with like certain cards? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can like high roll, make it rain. Like, there's just like a million different ways to kill these eggs now that are like not very committal. And I feel like it's just kind of like a right much more so, manageable thing to do. So basically, you feel like when you're versing like a, a Nivea deck they'll have their Anivia die and then they have the zero two egg which you lose too much tempo for trying to deal with i guess exactly it's like you'll have to depending on what regions you're in you'll have to pump like a mystic shot into it or something yeah, that right. you just don't really want to be burning on an egg no uh, and i don't think it affects like any sort of fucking extremely greedy Anivia lists which i think karma Anivia might be pretty cool but uh, anyway um yeah, yeah, I mean, I've heard that karma well. yeah. yeah, I just it just it it, it 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 baffles me a little bit because most of the time I just ignore the egg because yeah, as I said, it's just it affects my strategy too much. But um, like now there might yeah, be reasons. Can... There might be reasons exactly. to do it, right? Exactly. I'm just trying to think. Like it's so weird. Cause like I've never found myself in a situation where 
I'm like, oh, maybe I'll clear the egg because, like, but, the, like, it's weird because they just play, like, Rekindle it next turn and stuff and, like, the egg didn't really do anything. I mean, it's, okay, so the, the, the situation would be, like, the egg stays on board until turn 10 where you could have cleared it earlier. And maybe yeah. that happens every now and then. But most of the time, I feel like the egg is cleared for, from something or it blocks something or... No, I don't know. I, it, I don't know if it generally does, but also it really helps on those, like, turn 10 situations where you are able to like post turn 10 and you are able to clear the board of the Anivias and they have those eggs set up and you'll be at a point where you won't have like a high mana like threshold to deal with them but now no. you'll have some like you'll just be able to clear them out and uh kind of contain that situation a little bit it gives you like a shot at late game with this deck but I, I think in general though like I said the deck's kind of just gonna go away so yeah, the, like the done. Anivia control. Uh, Tenkoa, yeah. Kama is still be good against the Nivia? Yes. I, in realistically, yes. It was already good against the Nivia. Um, will is nerfed too, so they only have one mana advantage now when they will a Nivia. Yeah, I found that, that matchup really tricky when they willed your Nivia over and over. Mm -hmm. um, I agree, I the eggs were toxic. Cool, so. um, I don't think this card's been talked about enough. Like, no one's really been discussing this too much, at least from what I've heard. But I think this is a huge nerf. Relentless Pursuit? I think yeah. it's a, not a huge nerf, but it does take away a lot of the nuance of the card. I think th there's and, some uh, situations where... You're, you attack your opponent, right, with a huge board on mid-range. They yeah. choose to block one thing, and then you realize, okay, they've blocked this way. Since he's done that, I'm going to play Relentless Pursuit and he's going to be fucked. Now you don't get that yeah, option. Sure. You have to like choose like how you, I don't know. Actually, it hurts the guard, but essentially it's just giving him like one more action. Yeah. So I mean, because you know what I mean? They're still on the clock in a way. So no, it's actually, like, no, yeah, I think the worst scenario is when you attack and then they Relentless Pursuit on your attack. Yeah, that that's yeah. where it fucking hurts. That's where it fucking oh, hurts. Oh, sure. I think that's yeah. the main change. I think that's like what would make the most sense when it, it describing this change. So when you're attack your opponent, guys, and then you realize you're like you're attacking because you're kind of desperate to try and like get something, and then like they go, okay, I'm gonna block perfectly against and punish him, and then play relentless pursuit, and then he won't be able to stop my me from doing anything. So that stops that. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it, yeah, like you said, it's, it's a, it's a nerf, you know what I mean? Like it hurts the card, but it's yeah. still like giving you a ton of utility for three mana. And like in the decks that run it, it's like, you're definitely not considering cutting it by any no. means. Like it's still, it's still, it's still, it's serving still its does exactly the same thing pretty much. Yeah. Let's see what they said about it. Actually, we've actually wanted to make this change for some time. Rally is generally intended as a slow speed effect but it's nerfed regardless of design intent. In other Demacia changes have previously taken precedence, Relentless Pursuit is already very often cast at slow speed and could be overly potent or confusing when in response. So they're changing it because they think it's confusing. That's what that's what <laughs> I heard too. I heard okay. like an interview from the developer. Uh, did you watch the Progress Day? Progress Day? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I watched a bit of that too. Not all of it, but... Yeah, Simple. I watched some of that, and he was, he was saying that. Just, like, new players, like, kind of struggle to grasp, like, what exactly is happening when it's cast at fast speed. Mm. And it just creates, like, a situation like that, which makes sense. Yeah, okay. Um, even if it hurts the card, I guess it makes sense on that level. If it helps keep newer players from getting frustrated and dropping the game, I'm cool with that. No, that's cool. I think giving, your, giving one more action as well is very relevant. Mm -hmm. Um, Tenkua, so Brawl Manivia is a little bit better. Um, no, right? I don't know what would make it better. Hang on, maybe I missed something from a bit higher. Okay, because Will is a nerf, right? So, so Will, yeah. If like the meta was to stay exactly the same and nobody changed their decks, then Brawl Manivia, in a sense, is not too bad. If it still has the same yeah. matchup spread as before, it still loses to Karma Ez, but, um, yeah, they kind of both got tweaked, right? So, not really, not really in that sense, but if like the meta starts to shift, like I can see Anivia Braum losing to Callista Hecarim Aggro, like 
You know what I mean? Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, like the Shadow same Isles deck. Aggro that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the same deck, the same cards, like the Harrowing on the top end, but instead of like playing like an Anivia or a Braum a zero five, you're just playing like bigger threats. Um, yeah, I agree. And you can punish them a bit more because they're running like triple Harrowing and triple Ruination. Like you can definitely punish that because they're kind of slow. I'm glad they didn't sure. choose to touch its cost on Relentless Pursuit or Nivea. Oh, ab absolutely not. Yeah, I completely agree. I like a Nivea at six mana for sure. I think it makes it very playable. And yeah. I think a, I think a Nivea mm -hmm. still might be a decent card, but a Nivea Braum, I'm not too sure if that's like... Like, I literally saw Tenkua um, when I was watching Swim Stream. They were doing like the, the meta breakdown. They, they took a Nivea Control from S tier and deleted it from the meta list. They were convinced it's gone now. But I would hope that you can prove them wrong, Tenkua. Um, let's talk about Arena Bookie. I, I jumped into the stream at the very last second when um, yeah. LNZQ was talking about Arena Bookie. So I completely missed that part. I come in, literally, and I saw Swim just like in shock about what he had just said. Because I jumped in earlier and Swim was like, this yeah. card seems bad. And then I jumped in later, and he's just in shock about Alan ZQ's Alan ZQ. Uh, I points. I missed it. I didn't you hear what he said. It? Fuck, so nah. did I. Oh, so that's he, awful. he he must have been going into full detail about why he thought this card was looking yeah, nuts. Yeah, some type of strategy. From yeah. what I heard, it was that Arena Bookie is a really good two drop, pretty much. It means that in this general scenario. You play Arena Bookie on turn two, you play Draven on turn three, you get the immediate axe and you get the immediate value if you curve out like that. The problem sure. that I yeah, think with he- Yeah, Draven, that's the obvious like value. You know what I mean? Value situation yeah. in this card. Yeah, so it's a better curve. Now, from what I also understand, the fact that this card costs two is the most relevant than the HP. It's so, it doesn't contest Draven now, if that makes sense. Yeah, you play it into a curve with them. No, that makes yeah. sense for sure. I think yeah. that's probably what he was generally talking about. And now when you're yeah. swinging with Draven, you're always getting the axe and like, it just goes on and on. It also exactly. means that on turn two, if you curve out and play this, you'll discard the lowest cost card. Like you could even go, well, wait, what happens if you go like, if you play Draven's biggest fan as a one-off for, this is too much of a niche scenario, but yeah, no, no, it doesn't matter. I think, yeah. That scenario yeah. makes a lot more sense. Two into three. I think it helps, like, in uh, situations, too, where, like, in the later part of the game, when you kind of get that brick draw, that's, like, you know what I mean? Some one drop that is completely irrelevant at some point, you'll be able to just cycle it out instead of just burning it. You know what I mean? Like, you'll have an opportunity to kind of, like, go again at it. Yeah. Which I think will help in certain situations. I don't think that could make Swim blow his mind. I don't think it blew his mind as much as like he was in shock, I guess, by the difference in opinion. Because uh, Swim was just like kind of like not impressed and then Alan ZQ was like kind of making his points. But it's really up in the air, hey. I think um, that sounds like a pretty cool scenario and a decent curve. Like you could even play like a PNZ, like obviously like Jinx if you wanted to, but at the same time, Jinx is kind of slow. But if you were just playing... Uh, and an aggro deck where you played like my bay we played bay where is bay yeah uh one mana so you play yeah yeah Zor Zor Knight urchin you start curving out like crazy you start drawing your curve as well higher chance of drawing your curve i can see like a playing Zor Knight urchin on turn one arena bookie on turn two draven on turn three and just the gas keeps going yeah and you'll just be able to kind of just like solidify like a solid strategy from there like yeah right if you hit that curve like you kind of are in a way able to just kind of control what you're getting because you'll be able to like cycle something out that's bad with the zonite you know what i mean yeah. and then just like be constantly doubling up on your cards you know what i mean like you can mm. pretty much hit whatever you're trying to hit if you have something specific built into the strategy you know what i mean I do. I guess you would still have to run Jinx, so I think from what I understood that like if you're running this this discard stuff, you'd still run Jinx, even if it's not like the most optimal in terms of aggro cards. 
but in terms of like how the deck should look and how it would be in its best form then a draven jinx kind of like aggressive deck would be the best way even though other decks would strictly probably have more value that would probably be the best form of itself maybe i could see it go either way potentially yeah you know what i mean it's just I think one of the yeah yeah yes again no I, was gonna, I think i think how i would build it though is without jinx at first but then mm -hmm. if i felt if i felt like i was losing the matchups where i thought i would win then maybe it's because we need jinx and it's also like see how many of those situations like how often you're getting to that point where jinx yeah. is leveling you know what i mean yeah it's a good and, way uh, it. maybe even just put jinx but not as a three of potentially mm. kind of experiment with it a little bit you know so what other what other champion would you consider in this region combination actually let's have a i'm gonna bring up the champions well uh, i mean collection cards. On, without thinking about it whatsoever uh yeah vibe always sick you know what i mean Vi yeah, always gives you a lot of value it does if you're slamming through your deck too what yeah. about nah it's probably yeah it just seems like it'd be Vi, wouldn't it you can maybe run yeah. teemo as another one drop if you want to be aggressive yeah, Teemo's interesting. So it's probably Teemo, um, Teemo or Vi, for sure. Yeah. Like, like I'm looking. Yeah, at, I'd have to do some more, more theory crafting to like really. Look, look, look you've, got, you've got you've got Darius, Vladimir, Swain, Heimeninger, or Katarina, or Ezreal. Yeah. I don't think any of those champions Maybe. are gonna fit. Maybe just like not even running another champion, unless you want to run Vi. But it depends how fast you think you can kill them. I would think a deck like that would go. I don't know. Let's. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll um. We'll punch through these if you're interested. We'll punch through, punch through the rest of these cards. Yes. Yeah. And then maybe and maybe we'll, yeah maybe we'll theory craft some lists. Are you down with that? I'm with it. Yeah, I'm just All super right. down for that. All right, let's punch through the rest of these cards, guys. I think we're gonna do a detour on the whole um talking about like the boards and stuff. I, I'm really I really want to like theory craft some decks with faint guys. So let's smash these faint uh, basilisk rider five to four. What do you think? I think, I think it's not that bad. I think it's still a solid card. Like the four health is really what made basilisk just insane. Correct. Uh, Correct. Obviously, the other changes is what's going to hurt him more. It's just that kind of makes it more awkward to exist in a solo Noxus mm. build, you know. But the card's good. I think it's fine. Yeah. So it, now, I just, in a vacuum, it's fine. I think in a vacuum, it's fine. And if that deck, yeah. if that deck, which I'm assuming is still going to be good, it's probably still just going to be good. I think yeah, the I biggest, the biggest thing is Crimson Disciple, right? Absolutely, the biggest thing. But do we, I do think we, do we, we still, we still run this card. Be... We still run this card, right? In most aggressive decks, right? I think you probably do, but like there'll be some, you know what I mean? Some experimenting and trying to shuffle up and see if a better option is available. Yeah. But, uh, mm, I mean, the first thing I think of is House Spider. Yeah, but House you... Spider for sure. That went up in value. Yeah. I think you do lose a lot of... Um, it depends, man. Like, it might be hard. Like, I, I'm already thinking it's quite hard to cut this because you have so many other tools that burn. Like, Blood Transfusion. Um, and the Demo. The Demolitionist. Just generally trading. It's still yeah. probably going to be the card. Unless you like, there's a whole different it, deck altogether. Yeah, it'd require like a lot of reworking to like kind of shuffle this out because a lot yeah. of the thing is it was so powerful before that a lot of the things were just all centered around it, you know? Yes. So it's like just taking out all of those components in a way and just kind of going a different direction. But I think that's possible, and I think that the changes get like overstated in the sense of like it killing aggro. Like I think there's still tons of ways for aggro to exist and thrive without. Cool disciple no and it, and it did in the past we did we did see how spider is like a very yeah. popular card um yeah all the spiders crowd favorite stuff like that just going cool. wide uh arcanus is all for it my man uh cause on round three you waste one card i don't think that could make swim blow his mind cause on round three you waste one card yeah, yeah, yeah okay uh legion grand idea i like this change i completely agree and i really like this change it just like it because i was playing a lot of darrowing in the past few days and just like <laughs> there's yeah. so many situations where grenadier so um it, it hurts but like 
it hurts in a way, but you obviously get the two damage, so it's not that yeah. bad. But like now, guys, if you think like, about if yeah. you think about this, there's two common scenarios you'll find yourself in. Three, maybe even. We're talking like thermo beam, vile feast, make it rain, parlay, etc. If you curve out, you play a one drop, you play a three drop or two drops, sorry, Legion Grenadier. Your opponent like maybe doesn't play a one drop, etc. And yeah. then, okay, this is a scenario which is going to happen quite a lot. Your opponent has Vile Feast in hand. They Vile Feast your Legion Grandia. They trade into your one drop. Um, you, your opponent plays Make It Rain. You connect no damage that turn. Your opponent, like if Legion Grenadier now puts himself in a position where if you've played your one drop and you've played your two drop, which is Legion Grenadier, you're probably connecting with one of those units, if that makes sense, where previously you might not. Which means yeah. that Legion Grandia is only dealing one to the Nexus, but for the chance that your one drop connects, that is technically more damage. Yeah, and also like in a lot of the ways that I would use that card is to like value block into something. Like it's kind of like your designated blocker in a lot of sense for while yeah. you're doing your other aggro stuff. And it's almost like guaranteed now to either get a value block or if they're removing it, they're using a a lot more substantial resources than they otherwise would have exactly so it's it's just netting you overall i think more value like i think uh, it's a it's a buff for sure i was actually when i was like building my list here really quickly i will mention i think i can't remember which list i was doing it with was it fizz tf i don't know i was doing some aggro uh list and like i realized that like legion grandia was just a, a very auto include now yeah i can't i was putting okay. something weird i think i was like no, 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 I was building, um, I was trying to build, like, uh, Draven, Ezreal kind of stuff with, like, Zort Knight, okay. Urchin, Legion Grandia, and just, like, weird curves. Yeah. And uh, then, Grand well, in on. that kind of deck, I think it's good just to, to, like, any deck with Ezreal, any little bit of chip damage you can get just makes exactly. it, yeah, almost guaranteed, you know? So, Grenadia feels more like a vanilla aggro card instead of having to be cautious. Definitely a buff, I'm a, yeah, agreed, I think. I think general forehead knowledge right now is that Legion Grandia is actually low key. An interesting card now. Well, not it interesting. It reminds me of um, <laughs> Camp, Camp Punk. Yeah. yeah, not interesting. Yeah. Uh, so Flash of Brilliance. I, I I haven't personally played much Vima, so I don't understand the value of Flash of Brilliance outside of getting multiple elusive torrents in one turn. Uh, but I mean, I that's, don't, that is the value. That is it. That is the value. So. I don't think Heimendinger runs Flash of Billions anymore. Not right I don't now. think they run it anymore, and I think the card is just dead. I don't think yes. anybody wants this card. I think this card is a card that may resurface in the future. Like, in there, terms of in terms of have combo, a new scenario, yeah. Well, the first thing I think about is Ezreal, but I don't know if you can afford to run random generation cards in Ezreal. I don't think you can. Yeah, I think, so... Uh, you just get more value with other things. Yeah, and I, I don't think I don't think there's ever going to be a meta where having extreme value wins. There's always going to be a combo deck that counters it. So flash or brilliance just seems too weird. Yeah, I agree. It's late now, but I, I think it's Davey for that. popping in. Huh? I was just going to thank Davis for popping in. He always oh, he you. always comes in. He's from Brazil, I'm pretty sure. He comes in here. Every night at 4 a.m. says hi. I'm going to sleep now. <laughs> and yeah, checked in with you. <laughs> All right. Um, Sump Dredger contests a lot of three cost units. What do you think about this guy? Yeah, I think they're. It's obviously not as good as the one drop. I think that's kind of just like a given. Yeah, bay. Um, bay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> uh but i don't think it's bad i think it has consideration in a lot of situations but it kind of needs a specific deck around it to work it's not like a flexible card yeah. in my opinion this is a card that's like maybe not right now but give me more discard synergy maybe i'll look at it yeah like Some I, more I, discard I, synergy like i'm not um, gonna go out of my way to run jury rig just to run this for like the cool scenario where it's like really cool yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, that's whatever. This card. Yeah, it's a, uh, Zornite yeah, Urchin. Move on, though. move on with life. Zornite, Zornite Urchin. Zornite Urchin. Zornite Urchin. Yeah. I really like this card. I really like. I completely agree. This card. I completely agree. I was making a TFS. I was looking at this card. I'm like, I want this in my deck. I was making uh, PNZ decks in general. I was like, I want this card in my deck, dude. Yeah, that's the other thing too that I was thinking about. Um, some of these cards, like leveling TF, is just kind of easy with these. Like you can just build them in a certain way, and uh, TF gets a lot of value from them. It does. Well, hang on. If I bring but, up, I'll bring it up later. Yeah, I just, there's not much, uh, is there much to talk about or is this card just I mean, good? I think the main thing that just like needs to be said about it and then other than that, it's kind of just straightforward is just like the way it'll be able to like help you save curves. If you get it like a bad curve, you can almost like always like it like mends it and fixes it in a way. Yeah. And you're able to like, even if you cycle it later, you'll be able to cycle out some other bricks in your hands and just kind of keep uh value rotating which is cool so i guess the only difference is that we don't we don't we don't we get the card immediately mm -hmm. which is which most of the time isn't too relevant except for the time where if it if it doesn't die immediately then you don't get the options for the next turn so yeah now this is really crazy actually yeah i think especially with it being at one mana too it's like you can draw into something substantial yeah. you know what i mean that and you'd it's, still it's, be able to play it's the first few turns that give you high odds of finding a three of copy in your deck we're talking like i don't know it's like a huge increase yeah i completely agree um we already talked about shadow assassin um still tempest so i think this card is about to annoy people yeah, yeah. to a level that i can't i can't <laughs> explain enough i think this is a sleeper like annoying card people are gonna hate this card in a week i'm thinking this, uh this is a card I, I i need to see in action i need to see like what like a stun deck would look like or like would you run this card even with your sewer like would you just run this card in general i think you're running this card it's gonna end up in a uh, karma as i think it nets some value there especially with uh shadow assassin probably being a cut from most lists and but i think concussive palm is better right but it's two minute yeah difference. but if you're if you're cutting um shadow assassin you're getting another target card that's gonna net you value and just keep you you know what i mean like i think it created a situation oh. where there's room for the Steel Tempest now. Yeah, and would you say... not running three of, of Wills because yeah, of the yeah. Wilner, there, there's a slot for it. Would you say in a weird way, because Steel Tempest kind of buys you a turn, so it kind of buys you card draw? It, yeah, in a way, in a way. Mm. And also, the other thing about it is like, you know how like Karma Ezreal, like when they struggle with aggro, a lot of times aggro is kind of like pressing their mana and makes it difficult for them to like bank mana and you know what i mean like manage the the full attack but now they have like a cheaper option i was saying like there's going to be that situation where like a board is like striking and normally like you have them tap so there are like six or seven mana turn seven and now they have an option where they can like stop a full attack if they high roll like double or triple steel tempest for four mana you can just stop like two yeah. you know what i mean huge huge units from just or whatever units you can't block into like i think this nets you some some value that's gonna all right prove to be evident you've thought about this card a little bit <laughs> i saw this card and i just pictured myself screaming at my monitor so <laughs> i um yeah i went through it a little bit I didn't overlook it, but I just, it was definitely a card that I just, I need to see it in action. I feel you. I feel on that. Oh, a buff is a buff. Yeah, buff's a buff. Oh, there's, oh, there's only a couple cards left. Oh, fucking hell. River Shaper. <laughs> River Shaper? River Shaper. I was saying this earlier. I've never thought about using this card ever, and I don't think this changes my mind. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't really know. It's another, like, I need to see this card in action. Like, how desperate is Ionia for card draw? 
Yeah, yeah Isaac exactly. CB Chack. Thank you for the follow, homie. Like at I... best, I, I think you just draw one spell. Like you're not getting more value than that. Yeah. Um. Somebody uh, in that same discussion there was like talk about like in your barrier Shen deck, it's pretty cool maybe. <laughs> Yeah, but is Shen suddenly, like, <laughs> breaking the meta? I don't think so. Uh, uh, technically, Steel Tempest gives you one health and one draw. Draw one. Yeah, yeah, that's in a sense. But you don't get the initial card right away, though. You don't get the initial time. It's gonna... It's Steel Tempest might make you have to consider your turns more ahead. Like, all right, I'm gonna yeah. Steel Tempest now, so I can do this in a couple turns. Mm -hmm. It's gonna test your limits. That's why, like, to me, when I first look at it, as I said, like, fuck, man, how do I, how do I calculate all this in my head? Yeah, there'll be some like mana. You know what I mean, like, planning. Yeah, there sure. will be. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking zoom in here. Will of Ionia. Oh god, I don't know where to absolutely, begin. Yeah, absolutely love it. Uh, I feel like this card has been hindering my creativity for a long time. There's been a million things that you can't do just because of this card existing at such a prevalent level. And more than like five mana being expensive in a way, and that being the reason why it'll like uh, stop strategies from existing. Or yeah. like, I think that the fact that because it's five mana and it's not getting that consistent value in a lot of the decks, they're going to be cutting it from a three of down to like two maybe even one in some situations. And that's what really is going to help these other strategies because the probability of them having the will in their hands is going to drop significantly. Yeah, it's going to be tough for any of decks to justify having this as three of every time. It's it, it's going to make it really tough. Yeah. So I think that's where the value of it having it being at five is going to come in. It's just it being like a more niche option. Uh, for example, it's like how they don't generally run three of deny, they'll run two. And how yeah. many times I've gotten a harrowing off that they just can't pull the deny for because they don't run it, you know what I mean? As many copies of it. It's gonna be that type of situation for them. So the only the initial impact though, the one turn difference. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a buff to harrowing as well. Buff to playing your um your dude on turn four. Like if if yeah. Ionia, if Ionia decks are still prevalent and they start to cut down Will, they're probably running like Steel Tempest. Uh, and I'm just thinking for I a think second. Think this is a uh, buff to Braum, yeah. Like I'm just wondering, like if you ever cut it completely or as a one of. I mean, potentially some list. I mean, for example, our homeboy Sudden. You know, he's got zero Wills in that list. Yeah, so I saw that. He's already ahead of the curve on that. I'm just trying to think of but, um, uh, also like how easy it is to justify not playing your soil control with still Tempest. I'm just trying to think of like, cause we're, we're, we're losing card draw as well though, which is like the thing we're like, we're losing shadow assassin in a sense. We're losing will yeah. still Tempest is getting buffed. Like I can see, I have to look at the cards soon, but like, Card draw becomes an issue. Yeah, I mean, um, deep meditation exists. Yeah, deep meds. Key gonna guardian be... exists. Um, Ooh, key guardian. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So key there's... guardian suddenly starts to become a higher consideration than it used to be. In a yeah, in a way, I've I've already seen it. You know, as like I've seen it in Heimdigger. I mean, main, I've seen it in a Karma S two as like yeah. a one or two of, but. But yeah, there's more consideration for cards like that. They they have they have ways to draw cards. I don't think that's the problem. I mean, if anything, I felt like they had too many ways. So, I think this will just put it to like a a balanceable amount where they can't just cycle through, and you know what I mean. Like, By time, just pick out well. pick out whatever they want. Um, the final the final cards here. <laughs> irrelevant. Irrelevant, right? Do we ever, do we ever play a two minute two three elusive? Do we ever dis vulnerable. do we make a build water list that wants to run Golden Narwhal yet? I do not think so. So I've I immediately I, like because we have to talk about these cards in tandem, because once upon a time for a brief moment, 
Maybe I think it was a meme. Somebody was playing an Undying deck with Hunting Fleet. Okay, so to yes. kill off the Undying, that's interesting. Yes, so it was like they it gave him the ability to every now and then play a five mana seven seven and hit face with it. Kind of niche, yeah. but yeah, there I'm just trying to think be, if that um, gets better with it, with it being a four mana six six. Yeah, I don't know. I think this card's still niche. a meme. Yeah, I think it's still a meme. I think it's just like not going to be consistent enough. Like, if you're really trying to make a good deck, yeah, I know, I get matters, that. And and that's like, the I'm talking the about the the niche, which is not yeah. the way to think about this card. I mean, sure, um, every now and then you're going to meme your opponent by hitting them with six damage. Yeah. Every now and then. Every now and then, for sure. But you could maybe get like slight consideration in certain lists, but I think it, those the, lists are going to be few and far between. Like when I think about it, for the same reason, like would I run this in a build or a list, Golden Narwhal? Not really. So it has to be like not really this either. I think there's, mm -hmm. maybe, there's probably mean, more of a consideration to play this card than there is to play Hunting Fleet. The Golden yeah, Narwhal. Yeah, I think so too. I think the thing with like Hunting Fleet and like the relationship with Golden Narwhal is like if you're in a situation where you're creating a Narwhal for your opponent, a Narwhal must not be that threatening. 